It's Mask Monday. Myers Mask Monday. Ah. Myers Mask, Mask Monday. Um, this is a special one because we're here at my garage and um, I get to wear pajama bottoms and me and my boy Michael are gonna have some fun. Um, I'm basically gonna refinish this mask. I'm gonna take a layer of hair off. I'm gonna repaint it. I'll dremel the eyes a little bit to look just a little closer to how I see them. And then uh, I'll paint it. I'll seal that paint job and then I'll rehair it. I'm by no means an expert. I'm not saying that the way that I do this is the way to make the best screen accurate Myers mask. Um, I'm not even gonna be trying to make it screen accurate. I'm honestly just going to try to make it look more like the Myers mask looks in my brain. So let's bring this dude over to my, where I used to paint and I'm gonna just kinda get him set up for paint. First step is just gonna be kind of messing with the eye cuts a little bit. Um, it's the hardest part of the entire process and it's the most important part and it's the very first thing you do. Um, so you're gonna wanna just look at reference, um, like pictures from the movie, but also just pictures of like other masks that people have made. So. What I did was um, I have these like binders that I make of just like reference material. Um, this is just this really crappy collage that I made of like all my favorite like Myers masks. Um, this one's really good for the hair later on. Um, and then these are really good for the eye cuts. And this one's pretty good as far as the eye cuts go actually. I'm not gonna have to do too much. His right eye, our left, is kind of more like a teardrop. It's got this like kind of really sad look to it. And then uh, this one, his left eye, is kind of like a lemon and it's got some like more rigid cuts. So I'm just gonna kind of make these a little bit straighter. There's this little kind of tear duct thing right there that this one gets. And then I'm just gonna kind of open that up a little bit, make it a little bit wider. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. Uh, like I said, the eye portion is, if you get the eyes right, then everything else is pretty easy, but the eyes are like never easy. So let's do it. The thing, I'm just gonna take it an eye at a time. And the thing about this one is it kind of swoops up, which this one actually has a pretty decent angle of already. This like straight line right there is kind of a good hard angle. But then the weird thing about this one is it kind of is gonna go in. So I'm gonna just kind of draw that in a little bit. It goes up, but then it goes over and it has this like, it has this like divot and it goes down and over, and then it's like a hard angle from there. So I need to kind of actually bring this. Basically with this, again, the big thing is creating that triangle, but the hard part is, is you obviously you can't go too far, so you're kind of at the mercy as to, uh, of like what they cut before, because you can't add. So there's this triangle kind of divot in this eye that's the hardest part, I would say, of either of the eyes, is to get that thing and then it goes up like that and then you have so once I cut that away it's gonna be more of a shape there and then it'll go up and then as far as this one goes I got pretty lucky with this one this one looks quite similar except take it down a little bit again the eye cuts on this one weren't too bad and this one's the easiest because it just it's like that classic teardrop shape so all I'm gonna do is accentuate that a little bit okay so I'm gonna finish up with the pen. So I've got that drawn in. I'm just gonna go in with my cuticle scissors and um, they're at a curve, right? Again, that's the big thing, the cuticle scissors so that I can grab it and I can kind of follow up my line, but I'm not gonna go like straight, you know, to where I drew and just cut that. I'm gonna inch up to it and kind of do it in layers and then eventually I'll clean it up with the Dremel. Um, this eye, I'm not even gonna bother with scissors. I'm just gonna go in with the Dremel, so. I'm gonna start with my felt tip. I'm gonna grind it down with that, and I'm gonna go in with this one, and I'm gonna just open that up a little bit down there. The scissors, I was just, I was making it too jagged and getting too close to where I needed to be, so I wanna finish it off, but I'm gonna do it with the Dremel, and then I'm probably gonna have to go in with the, this thinner bit. <laughs> Had this Dremel for too long. Ah, uh, come on, you. To really get in there and try to get that shape, I'm not gonna be able to do it with the felt tip, so. All right. Okay, yeah, I'm calling it on the Dremel. All right, 
So, um, like I said, pretty much done uh, with the eyes. I might even go back and like touch them a little bit here or there, but um, I would normally spend like a whole day just on the eye cuts, but you know, we just gotta move on. I wanna show you the paint and all that, and, and they're not too bad. So um, the next step is just gonna be to remove this first layer of hair. Anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and just rip this layer off. It's really easy. Um, you just kind of grab it and then just start pulling. These are all put on in layers, and this is the last layer to go on. You start from the bottom and you work your way to the top. So ripping off this first layer, and, it's, and if it comes off in bits and stuff, it's fine. Sometimes you can get it to come off all together. This hair is really on here, so it's usually pretty easy. I'm gonna have to go in here and and really kind of peel this stuff off because this is this is like important. You know, normally if it if it was just any other part of the mask, it could have this crappiness to it, like all this crap, and I wouldn't care. But um, being here at the start, and you can see I'm like ripping this whole layer of paint off. All right, so I've abandoned that one for now. I mean, even that one kind of sucks, but at least I can paint it and glue around that. So, um, I just want to mention what I'm doing right now is super unorthodox. I never thought I'd be dremeling paint off of a mask. Um, Usually the step of ripping the hair off, it takes like 30 seconds. I've ripped the hair off of a hundred masks by now and I've never had it rip the paint off like that. And um, it just got to the point where it was getting like, I, I had no choice. I couldn't just paint over that because it would look really crappy. So I had to take the paint off. I spent like three hours yesterday just like painstakingly ripping off the paint and uh, it just got to the point where certain parts weren't gonna come off. So I was like, well, I just got to go for broke and I just decided to take the Dremel to it and it's actually working out pretty well. Um, I have never heard of anybody doing this. People do strip the paint off of masks on purpose because you get down to the blank and you get the most amount of detail. But this is probably not going to happen to you. When you take the hair off of your Myers mask, it shouldn't remove the paint with it. It should just come off and then you can, you can just paint over it. If it does happen to you, I, I, I don't know what to suggest, honestly. This is what I'm doing, but it, it could be kind of dangerous. The paint kind of wants to come off a little bit though, so I'm going at it with like a light touch and, I, and I'm just kind of going at it in layers, getting rid of all of that paint. Now all the little bits are off, so I'm gonna start just cleaning it with some air, then some water, and then I'm gonna put the shower cap on. You don't have to do this step if you just take all the hair off, but um, like normally I would just take the hair off and then uh, re-glue all of it on. I'll show you how to glue the hair back on whenever I do that first layer, obviously. That's pretty good, and then I'll go in and I'll touch up this area individually, but at least now I'm not gonna get paint all over the hair. And what I'm looking at with the shower cap is, like again, I wanna get all the hair in there. It's gonna go over the ears a little bit, so I'll just kinda touch up the ears at the end. But there's this hairline that's actually sculpted into the mask. I definitely want to keep the shower cap behind that line so that everything is painted. Just trying to get um, any little last bits of the kind of Dremel dotty stuff. It, whether you strip the paint off or you leave the paint on or whatever, you should clean it with at least just water and like a rag or a sponge or whatever. And it'll just like kind of help open the pores up a little bit and get it more ready for painting. So I'm gonna be using the Nightshades for motion picture effects, uh, which we're carrying at uh, Nightmare Toys. And I'm probably gonna actually be using mostly Creeping Flush Dark. I might lighten it up a little bit and I'm gonna add maybe a, probably a tiny bit of red, because I do want it to be a little like orangey, pinky looking. 
Um, and yeah, you, you need to shake your paint. I mean, any paint that you get, if it's just like cheap acrylic paint or whatever, or ink, anything's gonna separate from like the solvent that it's mixed with. So you're gonna have to mix it together. With the latex paints, you need to like over shake and really, really shake it because the latex will like settle at the bottom. It'll be a lot of water and have like color in on top. Um, if they sit for a long time and, but you have to really, really mix it so that it's not too thick or not too thin. That's just the Creeping Flesh Dark. Um, nothing mixed into it yet. It's pretty close to where I want it already. And then I'm just gonna tint up little bit by little bit with dots of red. And I'm, I might make it a little bit brighter with like some medium or something, but if you were just gonna buy two paints for this, you could just get the Creeping Flesh Dark and Fright White. Yeah, and that looks pretty Kirk skin tony to me. Um, it's just kind of like an orangish, pinkish, dark skin tone. It's, it's close enough anyways for now. Um, I am gonna just put a little bit of distilled water in it. Um, really like the distilled water is just gonna make it go further, but I really don't want it to get too thin because then it's not gonna wanna stick and it's gonna get runny and it's gonna bunch up. Um, one like good rule of thumb people say a lot is to make it like milky, but I go a little bit thicker than milky. Uh, I really don't wanna let it bunch up. I wanna keep it pretty even and just keep moving it as much as possible and just hitting it with little touches. I'm not like holding it down and just like, uh, I'm not doing that. You can for certain things, but um, with this, I wanna just kind of sneak up to it and like tint it and not let it bunch up and not lose any of that detail. And uh, this color, it's kind of like a GI Joe kind of skin tone. It's like dark and it doesn't need to be like translucent or anything like that. I'm gonna cover most of it in white so I'm not too worried about making it look like a realistic skin tone. I just want it to be that color underneath the white. And then another thing is I wanna make sure it's especially kind of defined and dark in the spots where I know I'm gonna to wanna to show skin tone. Cause it will affect how the white sits. Uh, I've got the skin tone down. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna basically cover it in white. And as far as the white goes, I'm just gonna straight up use white, just maybe Monsters Fright White. Um, and I'll dilute it a little bit with distilled water. And um, for a lot of people, it's gonna seem really redundant um, and almost pointless to, to spray it skin tone and then put white over top of it. What I really like about doing it this way is if it, the whole thing's skin tone, what I'm gonna do that's really important is come down at like a really intense angle so that I'm only going like across it and I'm gonna like really, really like sneak up to it at like that like angle so I'm just going down so that I'm not gonna spray a whole lot of white on all those bottom parts. And that's gonna help it like really start to already give it that definition so that later on I don't have to rely on a bunch of weathering and stuff like that. You can start to see Michael coming out. And again, the, if you can see like the skin tone is still right there. I haven't hit it like this way. I'm only hitting it down. So you can get, get a little bit of a clown nose, which there's gonna be a good amount of wear there. The lips aren't like straight up white. You know, that under one, um, under here is got the skin tone. So it just creates that contrast. And again, there's lots of different ways you can paint this. You don't have to do the skin tone. A lot of you will not want to, but um, it just works for me. I got like the first kind of coat of white on there and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go in with some more skin tone and uh, like do an up spray to kind of fill in some stuff. Even right now, like, I can't see the skin tone that well because these lights are, casting down from the top so it's casting a shadow in all those spots where the skin tone still is and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these lights off so that I can see where the skin tone's at and I'm going to touch it up with a bunch of skin tone and put it where I want it and then I'm going to go back in with the white again. All right so uh, I'm pretty much done with this first bit. Uh, I like I just basically let it sit and dry for a little bit so I could see how the colors set. Hopefully you can see where all the skin tone is still there here under the chin, the lip, the nose, in these divots. That's where I want the skin tone, and then especially here at the bottom on the neck and all that. But I'm actually pretty happy with it. It's good enough for me. Once I do that weathering, it should pull the whole thing together. Um, so I'm gonna let this dry. I think it's really good to at least let it sit overnight. Um, we're gonna let it dry for quite some time, and uh, next week I'll do the weathering, and I'll rehair it, and uh, I'll show you how to um, finish the mask, you know, seal it, and hair it and all that, and uh, hopefully we should have a pretty cool mask afterwards. All right, so that's gonna do it for this week. Um, so far, I have trimmed the eyes up a bit. 
um, took the hair off, dremeled all the paint off, uh, repainted it, and uh, I used the Creeping Flesh Dark mixed with a little bit of red rum um, to make the skin tone. And then I did the down spray of the Fright White. And the next step is gonna be weathering it. You're gonna have to wait until next week to find out how to do that. So make sure you join us, like, share, subscribe, and visit us at nightmaretoys.com, where we're selling these paints. Thank <laughs> you.